Uh, this uh, 800XL now was sent up uh, with supposed fault and I wasn't able to reproduce any fault on it. Uh, it seemed to work fine. So with that in mind I suggested to the owner that the MTD ROMs might be replaced with some decent stuff which I've done and he said that uh, if the machine works uh, and is reliable he would like some upgrades put in it so we've got some uh, goodies to put in we've got ultimate one megabyte we've got uh, and it's also getting uh, DVI Sophia which is becoming very popular for obvious reasons and it makes my life a little bit easier because I don't have to make display cables uh, fitting the boards easy enough but of course the connector is a, a different story you need a little bit of skill to put that in and make it look nice on the outside uh, unless you want it to look like cock and balls uh, so anyway, so that's what's going in the machine. We've got a side two as well. So unlike the previous machine with uh, Rapidus, uh, I was envisaging a fairly uh, happy, uh, easygoing experience with this one. Now, one thing I did notice about this board, which might explain uh, any intermittent issues, if we have a look on the bottom here, if we can get it in focus, it's very difficult to see on camera, uh, but there is... A fair amount of uh, flux residue around the sockets. Uh, the camera seems to be freezing there. It's probably the limit of detail I can manage. But there's quite a lot of uh, flux residue all around the sockets on the board. Uh, despite the fact the board is fully socketed. I've already replaced the GTI OS ROM and MMU sockets in lieu of uh, installing all these new goodies. Uh, so this led me to suspect uh, that the board has actually been socketed after the event. Not everything on the board is socketed, just most things on the board are socketed. So I think this was done after the fact, uh, which is, means there's, the board's already been put through a stress cycle, etc. So I came to fit the uh, Sophia board here. Now, of course, the uh, 74LS158 uh, multiplexer, I think it is, for RAM. With that being in a socket, it's too high and it blocks the back of this board. So but what do we do? We take the socket out and just put the chip directly in the motherboard no problem at all now as soon as I did that the machine stopped booting so uh, I was on the verge of basically um, giving up on the entire undertaking on a permanent basis no problems with the RAM on the board and when I take syscheck out again the thing wouldn't boot so I took the chip off <coughs> and what I have found uh, interestingly enough, if we put the meter in diode mode, if it will work, don't say the meter, don't say the battery's gone on the meter. No, no. There we go. So what I'll usually do here is just <coughs> work along uh, the back of the chip, scrape away a little bit of solder mask just so we can see that we've got continuity here, which we have on that one, and then here. And we don't on this one. So uh, there is on the, that would be pin three, if we can get that under the camera. The one pin three there, <coughs> there's a tiny little break between the via and the trace, which only became, well, you can't, you can't actually see it. It's still invisible, but uh, it was only detectable. Uh, once I'd actually taken the chip back off the board, so we'll probably put a little bit of patch wire there uh, So we'll see if we can uh, get that fixed now So just tack the corners in double check that we've got it the right way around yeah, which we have. So it's pin three I'll remember that Yep, that's stone dead so we just need a little bit of uh, wire if we can find some Nice wire. Don't need the insulation on this. I'm just going to strip it off. There we go. Right. Scrape off a little bit of solder mask. There we go. A little bit of flux. Alright. Tin the trees. Alright, now the trees tinned. 
I'm just going to lay this wire on here. There we go, that looks quite good. There we go. Right, so I'll show you that repair and then we'll test it. Right there. Now hopefully when we plug things back in, everything should work. And as you can probably hear, we get the little SIO burp noises. So uh, it does indeed work, that does fix the problem. So now we can test out uh, DVI. Um, to change the source. And there we go, lovely beautiful DVI. So yeah, I think as time goes on and uh, boards have been worked on and ha had more and more things done to them over the course of time, uh, this obviously becomes more and more common. Um, that simply taking a socket off the board uh, reveals a, a broken trace or opens up a broken trace. Now on this machine what I managed uh, not to do this time was uh, rip the uh, plate through out from the back of the board uh, so the DVI adapter here when we come to put it in uh, using the little supplied pins will be quite easy to fit in this position. Um, as I say the tricky part is actually cutting the hole uh, in the back of the case um, but uh, yes there should be no problems whatsoever. Ultimate one megabyte will go up in the top corner here with nice short cables uh, so I'm confident that now we've overcome this little problem uh, this one will be a happy build uh, and a happy 800XL which will uh, sail back to its owner very shortly with no problems whatsoever.